Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and this video is about when a printer isn't a pro printer, um, even if this, the Epson ET8550, uh, is the only specific printer I've ever actually recommended. Um, I've done videos about this and various things, but this is about things I discovered uh, when I was going to make a profile for a paper I hadn't covered before. Now I've done lots of profiles, I'll have some more information about the profile and my profiles that I've created for this uh, Epson 8550. A500's the same size but a smaller printer uses the same profiles. But anyway, things I want to have a look at is what does pro mean? And I'm only talking of Epson printers here and papers. Um, Canon obviously has its own definitions of it and various things and anyone who uses it will have their own. Um, the mystery as to why Epson Premium Luster is not a listed paper on this the 8550 whilst this Epson Premium Semi Gloss is. Uh, the way of finding things out by looking at the back of the paper and also more profile information. But anyway, let's start. Pro, what does it mean? It is a marketing term. Some, when somebody says to me, you're a pro photographer, well, yeah, I'm marketing it in a bit because it means to me, it means very little more than I earn a living through photography. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, yeah, there may be other things that people wish to associate with the number, but then again, people call inkjet prints, gicle prints, um, and fine art prints and things like that. A whole lot. Marketing perfuses everything. Um, anything you read from manufacturers will have been written by the marketing department, so always remember that when you're looking at things. But, you know, here's a paper that I wanted to use for it. Um, remember in terms of, and once again, I should you know, remind you, this is, I'm talking about Epson here. Um, and this is from talking to people in Epson UK, does apply elsewhere, but remember that it's a global business, but different parts of Epson make different products. Um, there is the pro printing side, there's the very big printing side, and I'm going to be visiting one of Epson's uh, uh, demo centres, or innovation centre, as I believe they call it, um, in the next week or two, to have a look at some very, very big printers. But this is desktop stuff, the sort of stuff that yeah, ordinary people would buy to make prints on. Um, this is a consumer printer. Here it is, 8550, excellent printer. Here's a print I made on it using this paper. This is an Epson paper, premium semi-gloss. Now, this wasn't in my collection of profiles because I'd never seen any of this. Um, I always use premium luster. Uh, but if you look in the printer settings, you will find that you only get premium semi-gloss. Now, I said this is a printer made by the consumer division. So it is not a pro product to use that terminology for it. That's the difference between them. Now, when you look at uh, the printer here, it's made for consumer levels of use. That means for those people wanting to buy one of these and tell me they want to print, you know, five, six hundred prints a day, use it every day of the week. How long is it going to last? It's not going to last that long. Uh, months, a year or so, maybe two if you're really lucky. It is not designed for heavy duty use. Heavy duty use is something like this, the Epson P5000 sitting here. This will be happy churning out prints every single day. In fact, it will be happier printing every day uh, because it'll, it, it works. It, this one needs exercising fairly regularly. I, I have a weekly reminder to turn this on and do a print. This one I can happily leave three or four weeks. Although, uh, as I should say, this is actually Karen's printer. Karen, my wife, the other half in off light images. This is her office printer, but I borrow it occasionally for some testing. Um, it is still the best printer for getting into printing. And the reason I say that is because it's an ink tank printer. And one of the biggest things I found that puts people off doing their own printing and exploring and experimenting with their own printing, which is what you need to do to get good results for it, or the best results from your images. You need good pictures as well and whatever, but it's an ink tank printer, which means that you can print away and people don't have that fear of cartridges running out and things like that. Now, I've had people at printer companies tell me that that's not real. Well, I'm afraid it is real. 
people do worry about ink carts. But this one here, uh, the 8550, it has pigment black, it has a dye black and dye colours in it, six ink in total. Now, I made a profile for this Epson Premium Semi-Gloss paper. And in making the profile for it, um, I've run it using, uh, I've, I've created a target here with nearly 3000 patches on it. This generates really high quality profiles. Now, it's a standard stuff because I've got the kit to do it because uh, yeah, it's, it's useful kit, but it's not something I'm going to suggest people rush out and get because to actually replace the kit I've got here would cost you about 5,000 quid. So uh, not something. There are easier ways of doing it if you want uh, things like the old Color Monkey i1 Studio, CC Studio. There's even the Data Color uh, a version of it, um, Spider Print. Um, they are worth experimenting with but you're not going to get the results I get from the kind of kit and software I use here. Uh, it's because I've been involved in testing in the past that I've got all this stuff. But anyway, this is results from it and looking at it I can see, looking at a graph on here, I can see that it's a dye ink because if you're using the premium semi-gloss setting, which is what I use for many papers profiling on this, you are not using the pigment black. The pigment black ink would not work well on this paper. So this is just using the dye inks, uh, very acceptable. It's not got the brilliance of when I printed this on a metallic paper. This is an image I took recently when I was on the Suffolk coast, uh, but it looks great. Yeah, the picture looks fine. Um, if you want permanence then and more professional printing, then perhaps you'll go for a pigment ink printer, but that costs more. Uh, they tend to be bigger only, um, but prints you get from this, these are going to last. I did some stuff about print lifetime. Print them on good paper, make sure you don't expose them to light too much and various things and they will last for years. Not as long as pigment inks but you know depends on what you want your prints for, how much bother, how bothered you are, whether they last 40 years, 100 years or 400 years. Um, entirely up to you. Once again if you sell prints, that's a marketing consideration. So therefore you're much more likely to use, if you're selling prints, terms like pro, pigment ink, gic clay, and other stuff, assorted nonsense like that. I say assorted nonsense because you know, I'm not selling stuff. If I was putting together a website uh, selling prints, I would emphasize archival properties. I would emphasize pigment inks. I might even use the gicle word on occasions because it impresses the people that deserve to be impressed by it. Um, you know, to me, it's a red flag when anyone asks me a question and uses that term in it. But you know, back to this paper, professional, pro, non-pro. Well, in making the profiles, the real giveaway as to whether this is a professional paper or not is to have a look on the back. And this paper, we find an Epson watermark on the back. Uh, the difference between this paper and say the premium luster. Now the premium luster is slightly thicker. This one is 250 grams, premium luster is 260 grams. Uh, the premium luster and the pro papers do not have Epson written on the back of them. Now this paper dates back 20 odd years easily it's been around. Um, the printers that are suggested on this box says that, uh, yeah, the Epson Stylus Photo 2000, that goes back quite a long way uh, for that. But these papers have Epson written on the back, the pro papers, and the pro papers are directly supported by the pro printers. They won't have Epson on the back because quite reasonably, remember we've gone back quite a while, uh, Inkjet was considered cheap and nasty 25 years ago. Um, there were some good inkjet prints, but in general, there was a feeling that because people used little home, you know, home printers and stuff like that, that having Epson written on the back of your paper, of your prints, was not a very professional thing. So Epson produced papers which didn't have their marketing on it and they were aimed at a more pro line. So you'll see use of words like that. But premium luster, slightly thicker, similar surface, uh, a paper. I've been looking at this one. It's OK. Would I use it for anything? Probably not. It's a little on the thin side, um, but it's perfectly adequate for printing. 
but it's not a pro paper because it's got the Epson written on the back of it. And it's, it's in that way almost a very arbitrary choice of whether something, which range something falls into, whether it's one or the other. So anyway, I said that I was, I, I've discovered this making another profile. And it was because uh, in the media settings for this printer, there is semi-gloss setting. I'd never had the paper. I had a chance, um, somebody at Epson found some pa of this paper uh, and I thought, right, I'll make a profile for it. I've made a profile. It's an excellent profile. It works really well. Uh, much like all my other profiles, I put links in the notes. They are available. All I ask is a coffee donation for them if you find them useful. I'll be adding this to the collection. If you've previously had my profiles and made a donation for it, just drop me an email if you'd like this one as well. Um, the full set is available. I say check the notes for the links for that. But drop me an email if you've, uh, if you've had papers, uh, profiles off me in the past. They do make a real difference and the profiles are what helps elevate this printer from you know, an ordinary inkjet consumer printer, uh, which it is because it's got a scanner on it and things like that. No document feed or any, any office-y stuff like that. But it works really well. Um, now, do I suspect that the pro printing division of Epson thinks that this one treads on their toes a little bit? Hmm. Um, I suspect they might. This also explains why when this printer came out a few years ago and it's not being replaced anytime soon. We bought this one with our own money. Um, wasn't, you know, wasn't given to me or anything like that. I spent real money on getting this because I expect this printer to last for a good few years. It's going to be there up working in Karen's office. She loves it for doing various stuff. Uh, the scanner in particular found very useful for a load of documents. Uh, it's occasional use, not as they know ADF or anything like that, but it makes nice prints as well. But um, yeah, if I really want the coin, I've got something like this and I've got other printers as well and stuff. But when it comes down to it, this is a nice printer, even if it is not officially a pro printer. Um, so there you have it. Um, check in the notes as well. Uh, for my main written review because the main written review is regularly updated. It also links to all the different videos I've produced related to the 8550 and 8500. So 8500, just think of it as a smaller version of this. It works exactly the same. Um, yeah, there you go. Uh, the mystery of why there is no premium luster setting on the Epson 8550 all goes back to marketing and it goes back to marketing from 25 years ago. So there you go. Hope that was of some interest. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. As I say, drop me an email if you're interested in the profiles and stuff because they do make a real difference to the print quality. And um, thanks for watching and uh, bye.